Hello and welcome to The Treasured Page. I'm Melanie and this is our quiet crafting space. Today I'm having a look at all the little scraps that have been falling in on me this week. I now have a clear space which is much better and much more calming. Just wanting to have a sort through and I thought I'd bring you along because sometimes when we're getting a bit overwhelmed with our stuff it's quite nice just to clear the decks, put it into a pile, put it all in front of you and decide, right, what is rubbish, what is useful and what can I make? And just by playing with it, what ideas come out and that's the more importantly. So lots of crafters are talking about losing their mojo and how to get back into uh, being inspired by things. It all starts with playing with paper. That's how we all got into this. We all just sat down feeling very overwhelmed and started to look at things and our rubbish in a different way. So that's what we need to do, get back to the basics of it and um, see what where that takes you. So, first of all, that is vintage music paper. So that's valuable. This is a very old letter written in uh, ink pen and I think it's a legal letter it's talking about an allowance it's talking about executors and uh, paying a hundred pounds and I'm not really sure I can read much more but it has a watermark up there the paper is absolutely beautiful and it is um, Bear with me, I'm getting my phone and I'm just shining the light. Can you see the watermark there? So sometimes you can get these beautiful pieces of paper, A, Perry and Sons, uh, 1863. Wow, okay. So this may not have been written in 1863, but the company was established in 1863. Either way, it's an old piece of paper, isn't it? So that's interesting. Um, and the most interesting piece, the, <laughs> the most interesting bit, is the watermark on the paper. So that's lovely, and that makes me feel a little bit worried about ripping it up because of the hidden interest within that piece of paper. So that's special and probably valuable to a collector that likes to look at things like that. Um, okay, so I've got some envelope here, another envelope, and another envelope. So there you are, sometimes when it's so overwhelming, all it requires is a little sort out, and then you can see a way forward with it all. So see, the ideas just sort of start to present themselves. And then once you can see the wood for the trees, you can start to uh, make things make sense. You know, your your brain starts going to the places of uh, creativity rather than chaos. And uh, yeah, so there you are. I can now see a way forward to make interesting things happen. And yes, let's create some strips out of this fibrous handmade paper which is like a rice paper. I'm doing my best to try and get a strip. Okay, of some fluffy edges. So the idea here is to use let's just use some all-purpose glue here. This is in the applicator bottle. What we'll do, just on that edge, is we'll stick the hammer papers all the way around, making sure we've got the nice this edge showing. Try and see if I've got enough to do that final side. Okay, and then that's the final bit here coming in. 
where I've even got some extra. And then that gives that a nice edge. Um, but I just now like the idea that this is going to go on a envelope. And this is just a greeting card one. You know, nothing, it's got a mark on it on that side, but we'll do something with that. There we are. That just sort of takes that in, uh, newness of the envelope away. And then with a brown, I shall just go round the edges just to give that more of a rustic finish. But it's quite nice to have that empty space there. Certainly certainly a starting point for something and then that is going to you know, be a flip or, or just an envelope in the journal. What we'll do is just stick that down Get a little brush, line up the envelope. It's going to have a little border, that'll be fine. Circular motion. Gently as you come near the envelope fold. I'm using a Distress Oxide in Antique Linen and it's hopefully just going to give a very subtle effect. And then we'll just remove that and that is the effect there. Perhaps we want to see if this pattern repeats, I'll just do a bit here and hopefully that's faint enough just to, yeah, that's fine. So that's quite good. Anyway, that's fine. That's enough. That's plenty. And then something, something else there. Or maybe the butterfly that I cut out that's in the same style. And maybe I don't want the wings all anchored down. Maybe they turn up a bit. Yeah, and then a label. Let's do that. Right, I'm sticking the butterfly on. I'm just leaving the tips of the wings to curl up. And uh, everything else stuck down. Let's see how I like that. I just like the monochrome look, actually, now I've sort of got that. Or we'll want something else down there, you know, just maybe a label, that would be good. But not that, that's a medical label. So unless that was a nice label. Maybe we want, maybe we want a nicer sounding label like eucalyptus oil or essence of lemon. These are medical um, labels that I have. Um, I haven't made them available because I wasn't sure if they were going to be successful or not. So I'm just sort of having a play and then I might decide that this is useful uh, for everybody else. And then we can... I think lemon is nice. Essence of lemon. It's a lovely uh, label because it's from London and it says Lavender Hill, which is a nice address. So just fussy cutting this out, it is a digital and uh, nice to be able to use that. Old vintage pharmaceutical pharmacy labels. Alright, so we just see about that being added in there. 
Maybe a die cut would be good there, but uh, I haven't got one. But you know, I'll put that in. Put that to one side. All right, now I've got this, which is some uh, packaging from Hobbycraft, some craft envelopes, which I found in a charity sale. I've also got this as a tear sheet, so I'm probably going to use that as a background. So we just want to glue this down. I'm just trying to use the glue that's going to be quick for me on the video whereas the other one seems to come out very slowly which is fine when I'm on my own but I don't want to waste your time well, let's just reveal what we've got here there we go, that's quite nice isn't it So we'll do something here as well, something darker. How about this straw paper? Right, let's do that. Let's go right to the edge without damaging the bit there. Okay, let's bring this over. Stick that down. And we'll cut that out. So yeah, just looking at packaging and the things that you get, sometimes um, you get some really interesting packaging, something like this um, is, is a fun shape that you could recreate, just a semicircle, cutting that out and then uh, creating something with that idea. Oh. I think that's going to go there. I've got this scrap here, which might look nice on the bottom. Or along the top even. Because I live um, by the coast, which is why we've got some seaside images coming in here. And uh, on the south, south coast of England. So yes, you may sometimes hear the seagulls or the gulls in the background. Let's see if this shows up. If we do... Oh, it will do. Look, it's going to show up on that straw paper with the antique linen oxide. Oh, look at that. That is so sweet. And the little bud's gone right in the middle, just perfectly. Now that I'm going to cover it up. <laughs> oh, isn't that nice? Well, that's a lovely effect. Good, 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 good. Take away any white edges and um, I'm using the Fabri-Tac here because I'm gluing over the top of that cheesecloth material and we'll put him on at a jaunty angle so that uh, we've got the wing sticking out there but that will be okay. Do we want like an extra pocket, so sort of a pockety thing? The stress oxide, that's been good. Strip off. Oh no, that one hasn't come out as well. Well, it is there, it's very, very faint, very subtle. I've got um, a vintage photo, perhaps that would be better. I used my darker colour. This is an oxide and we'll just um, go over again. Ooh, that's quite quite a bit darker. That's nice. Um, a 
Okay, so that's going to be stuck down and become a pocket. So I've just stuck it down on the three sides, leaving the top bit open. I think that's what I wanted to do. Just move it to the end. That's it. That comes over like that. Just working with the scraps, just doing what we can. A little bead of glue down there, not sure if that's working. We want something a bit stronger here, so I'll just do Fabri-Tac there. Bring that round. And hope for the best. And I'll just hold that in place, put a little clip on there while we maybe ink round here with the brown ink which is gathered twigs it's a mid brown colour pretty 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 there we can add our little extras this little sort of ticket tea card holder so that's that and we've got this we're doing quite well aren't we really off of the scraps off the disc just, yeah just sticking down what's in front of you really something with this we'll just move those over what else have we got here little something uh, well it needs a focal point and I'm not sure I like my focal points up here what have I got I've got this. It's a bit red, isn't it? And everything's white. Yes, that is beautiful. I might stick that on the inside. That showcase that, and then we might want inside some note paper oh and the other thing I've got recently is um, I went to a, a junk sale and I found this and it's really old vintage notepad so I'm going to take that like a writing notepad paper but just vintage I don't know how vintage But vintage enough for what I want, so it's going to not fit in there, but that's okay. So we get the tearing ruler, which is moved. So I hope everybody's having a good week and uh, enjoying just settling into a quiet craft in your own quiet crafting space. I hope you're making making that uh, some something that you do regularly. You're able to get away and escape now and again. I've just got a standard staple here, not a Tim Holtz fancy mini tiddly attacher or whatever it's called. I've just got that sort of a thing. And then I'll just use that off cut there to cover it up because I don't want to see it. And uh, that then gives that sort of covered up look, which you do actually sometimes see, don't you, in the uh, vintage finds. Okay, like that. And then I'm just going to tear off some of the bottom pieces. And just get sort of a stepped edge on there, which is quite nice. Scuff it up a little bit. A little bit of ink. That's that. 
done and then we're just going to glue that whole top section down I try and fray up the fabric a bit more that might make make it look a little bit more rustic pull the fabric about diagonally We're just gluing this down, having a lovely time, and because it's fabric, just smooth that glue out. Don't want globules because it comes through and leaves a dark patch. Straighten it out. A little bit of a grunge up round here, and then we're going to pop that down. to make a pocket That's it. for a little something. Right, what little something have I got here? But I haven't got a stamp at the moment so we'll just put that in there just to show what it all is. That can come off. Cute, 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 and that may go on the front. Tickets, thread everywhere, and stamps. That's it, that's nice. Now, I think what we could do, I've gone off that now, it's beautiful, but I've gone off it because. It's too rustic inside and that's just too over the top. You wouldn't have that. I like that. But I think these are Tim Holtz butterflies. Could be, could be. Oh, that's lovely. Or like that. So it's either that or it's the butterfly. No, it's not the butterfly, it's the flowers. Are we having fabric on the side? Is that unnecessary? I think that's unnecessary. Is it? What about this? Too much. What about a lace? I think these are Tim Holtz uh, die cuts. These flowers. Right, just get the edges so they don't ping off. And we're just going to sort of marry the two up like that. So we can sort of see that number. Very faint, a little bit like that. That's it, that's super, that's it. That is what we needed to do there.
That's great. OK, well, I don't think I've quite reduced my scraps. I don't think that's possible. But I've certainly made a start and I've certainly organised them enough to feel like I could sit down and do another little crafting session and I'll still get some, some lovely things out of it. So that now feels like, um, you know, something that I could pull from and I'm going to just put it all in one bag and then you can take that to another room or that's the bag that you're just using and it just helps you focus uh, and you don't have to look at all the mess and then you can pull in other little bits little things embellishments prettier bits fabrics and uh, focal points but just you know get get yourself a handful of scraps and just work with that so out of that little session we've got an envelope and we've got uh, a little ticket or ephemera holder with two pockets and then this is a little booklet here with the embellished flower on the front, a little bit of lace, a little bit of stenciling for some interest, a ticket or a label, a ho homemade paper and then a stamped fabric which was off of another project making a pocket to put tickets and labels, stamps and ephemera and then the vintage note paper here with a stencil over the top in an oxide ink and able to be torn off and used and it's quite nice to put birthday dates there and then stamps if you're going to have nice picture stamps for people uh, for their greeting cards and then that can go into a pocket uh, or sit on the desk and be used all from scraps guys that's junk journaling all of those things are then added into a journal book And then we just find a page in our journal and that can be put over there. There's interest on the other side so it looks nice. It can hook in and stay there. That's somewhere to put something. You can flip it open, still get your writing space and have your hidden secret bit in there. And that could even be glued down or some of it glued down so that becomes a tuck area as well. And then you would be able to put other things in that bit or a sheet of paper that's thin. And then over here you can add this. Maybe that would go in as a pocket. You would glue down those three sides, pop that there. And then you've got a pocket at the top, one there, one there. Or it could be over here and it, uh, sorry, it could be over here and it could be a side tuck there. Um, it could be up here and and be a you know a flip or a flip it, you would have to decorate something there but that's a great idea and uh, so I like that and then we could even this is where this could live you know like that but that does add a lot, lot of bulk like that definitely want the ephemera to be going in there because it's a plain background and Maybe this is something that you have at the front. There we are. So wherever you decide to put your junk journal makes and your treasured elements and ephemera into your journal will be special to you, personal to you, and you will have had a lovely time making them, relaxing into the quiet craft that is junk journaling. I hope you've had fun and value here. Please do like and subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you next time and uh, hearing your comments. And above all else, guys, just slow down and make crafting time for you. Bye-bye now.